Well, hardy clock in the gallop, folks, and welcome to a special show. I felt that it was incumbent on us to have a show like this just ahead um, as a precursor to our show that we're expecting to speak to the great minds of horse racing, Mike Wanklin, Graham Hawkins, Jay August, uh, here on Clock in the Gallop about the upcoming Vodacom Durban July. There's just 17 days to go to the big race happening down at Hollywood Bets Gravel. And we thought we'd just run through a few semantics regarding the race, um, and then you'll be prepared for the program that comes up a bit later. So I'm gonna share a couple of things with you uh, for those that don't really know about uh, all of these things. Um, I wanted to show you the program for the big race. So this is the um, official racing program for the Hollywood Bets Durban July. As you can see here, it's a race on turf 2,200 meters. The whole race day, um, the total stakes are 8,690,000 of which this race is 5 million rand. Entries for the race closed on Tuesday, the 14th of June um, for the main, for the um, for the other races on the day, that is. And uh, declarations close at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, the 22nd of June, which is next week, Wednesday, when the final race card is finalized. But with regards to the main race itself, those dates refer to the other races on the day. But have a look at this. So I'm going to go through this relatively quickly um, it is an express condition of this race that the company reserves the right to exclude any horse which in its opinion does not warrant inclusion in the race um, so therefore when it comes to choosing the final field of 18 runners plus two reserves the company shall have the right to exclude any horse at the declaration stage and to decide on the final field for the race so that rests with the company um, being gold circle who are the racing operator then weight shall be framed by the handicapper in his sole discretion and without necessarily having regard for horses merit ratings but subject to the following the weights to be carried shall not exceed 60 kilograms and shall not be less than 52 kilograms so the top weight 60 the minimum 52 the minimum weight for four-year-olds and older for colts and geldings is 53 and for fillies and mares is 52 so that's for four year, years old and older and the maximum weight for four years and older at publication of weights colts and geldings 60 fillies and mares 59. then we go to the minimum weight for three-year-olds colts and geldings 53 fillies 52 and the maximum weight for three-year-olds at publication of weights colts and geldings 57 fillies and mares 56 no penalty shall be incurred after the publication of weights. Just to put you into the picture, the publication of the weights actually took place on uh, Tuesday, which was yesterday, um, before we recorded the show on the Wednesday. Then point five, notwithstanding two and three above, which is the minimum and maximum weights for three-year-olds and four-year-olds and older, the handicapper will raise all weights proportionately to 60 kilograms should the top weight originally allotted be less than the 60 kilograms at final declaration. Then it goes on about the Durban July logs that the company in consultation with the handicappers will publish a series of logs of the entries. The logs will reflect all the horses in order of preference as to the makeup of the final field at the time of publication. And then below, which is what I wanted you to see, are the entry fees to get your horse into the Hollywood Bits Durban July. So when entries opened, and closed eventually the initial entries on Tuesday the 19th of April. So the very first entries were on Tuesday the 19th of April at 11 o'clock in the morning. You had to pay 2,585 Rand, non-refundable for your horse to be entered. You then had to go to the first declaration stage on Monday the 9th of May, where you had to pay a further 4,315 Rand, non-refundable. You then had your first supplementary entries, which closed on Tuesday, the 10th of May. This would have been um, after the um, the Guineas, uh, the, uh, the case in Guineas Day. So there you had to pay 14,375 Rand. Then the second declaration was on Monday, the 30th of May, where you had to pay 7,190 Rand. And then the final supplementary entries, which closed on Tuesday, the 14th of June, um, the final supplementary entries, if you want to supplement, that was yesterday, you'd have to supplement at 30,190 rand. So this was the figure that the connections of Airways Law, who's been supplemented 
at the final supplementary interest would have had to have paid 30,190. And then the weights were published yesterday, which I'll go through shortly. The final declaration happens next Monday, the 20th of June, where you have to pay 44,656 Rand and it gets refunded if you're not selected to run. And entry and declaration fees must be fully paid by Monday, the 27th of June. The final field and draw, announcement of the final field and the barrier draws will take place on Tuesday, the 21st of June, which is next Tuesday. And then the final field, 20 horses will be carded, 18 horses plus two reserves. The reserves to be scratched by 8.15 in the morning on Friday, the 1st of July, the day before the meeting. Elimination will be at the sole and unfettered discretion of the company. So a lot has been said there about the company. It rests with the company. The company must decide on which horses they want to make up the final field. And it's obvious that when they choose the final horses, they want it really to be a betting opportunity to maximize the betting on the race. Which horses will attract more betting than others when it comes down to margin calls? And that's particularly interesting. I think that'll enter the equation there. It then talks about the gallops, that the gallops are scheduled for next Thursday, the 23rd of June, um, failing which uh, the horse will, in the absence of exceptional unforeseen circumstances, which the company shall, in its sole discretion, declare as such, be declared ineligible to run in the Hollywood Bets Durham July. I don't think I've seen that ever happen before. And I think that. Um, that uh, the company's pretty lenient on that. They do want the horses to gallop, and, and, and sometimes it's not very, very hard gallops. It's just mere, a mere canter or just a, a little workout. Uh, horses that aren't um, at in Natal on the day that are out of province will have to gallop out of the province and uh, they're to be screened. So to be screened next Thursday, the 23rd of June on the day. And uh, then... The, the bottom part here, firstly, the stakes breakdown, which I want to come to. First prize is 2,940,000 Rand, which is a lovely uh, prize that Hollywood Bits are putting up. Second prize, 940,000. It goes down to 10th prize of 60,000, which is the same uh, for horses that finish 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. But this is the important part that I'm going to shade in here that I want you to have a look at. The winners of the following grade one races in the current season will qualify automatically. Save that where appropriate, Gold Circle reserves the right to request a public gallop to determine the well-being fitness in the event that any of these winners have not raced within three months of the date of final declaration. Given the timing of these races, this would, practically speaking, only apply to winners of events one, two, and three. Those three being the Lomarans Queen's Plate, the World Sports Betting Cape Town Met, and the Johnson Workwear Cape Derby. So those three horses automatically get entered and accepted. Uh, there's no, they'll definitely get in. The World Sports Betting South African Classic will get in. That being um, Red Saxon. The Phil Kloboss Drift SA Phillies Classic, well, as we know, Rain in Holland um, would have ordinarily got in, but um, she's having her operation and she's having time off. So that does leave a place there vacant. The World Sports Betting South African Derby, Aragosta gets in because of that. The Premier's Champions Challenge, the Daily News 2000, the Wellington 2000, and the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge. So ordinarily, if there were different horses that won there, you've got 10 of the 18 set and cast in stone. Then this part here, winners of the following races in the current season will enjoy preferential consideration for inclusion in the final field. The World Sports Betting Karting Summer Cup, the World Sports Betting 1900, and the Cup Trial. So what it's saying there is that they will be considered pre preferably to other horses that have been entered. So if you have a horse that hasn't won one of these races, that is an entrant, it, if it wins one of these, then they certainly, you can put it high up on the list and will receive preferential treatment. So I wanted to run through that with you first um, so that you're aware of our discussion, which takes place uh, with our pundits a bit later on. Then. I wanted to go on to the weights. Now the weights were decided yesterday and the weights were published yesterday and everything sort of hinges on what weights horses are carrying. So let's just run through um, what weights have been set now um, for the various um, horses that are running in the big race. And let's go from the top. So the top weights will be um, Jet Doc and Comity Ding. They both set to carry 60 kilos. Why? 
Well, the answer is they're both rated 129 and they're both four-year-olds. And that's the highest that any horse can carry in the race. Then Bulgarian, um, who's a six-year-old, carries 59 and a half because he's rated 128, one pound lower than the um, 129 of Jet Dock and Comet Deng. Do it again is rated a bit further down at 126, the same rating as linebacker. Then Al Mutana, who won the gold challenge. Well, he's now in because it is a, one of those races where you get automatic entry and he's running off a 125. Asterix um, is the winner of the Premier's Champions Challenge. And again, he gets in because he won that race. So he'll definitely make the final field. You can see here that MK's pride, double superlative netter, they've all been scratched and um, are not running. Then Puerto Manzano, winner of the Jubilee Stakes on the weekend in Joburg, gets, uh, doesn't get in but is likely to get in of 120. The former a Guineas winner, Russian Rock, Bingua, and so on and so on and so on. So if you look down here to the three-year-olds, the top-weighted three-year-old is Safe Passage, carries 54 and a half kilos. The Philly Marina, also 54 and a half. The Stay on their brass, uh, second base comes in at 54 and a half. Zilzal at 54. And then these horses here at 53 and a half. Flying Carpet, the Summer Cup winner. Hood Sprate, 53 and a half. Sovereign Spirit, uh, 53 and a half, Sparkling Water, 53 and a half, and then Aragosta and Pomp and Power and Red Saxon, who definitely gets a run because of the win in the Classic, all get 53. Zapatias, 53, Waterbury Lane. The PE Challenger, Divine Odyssey, gets uh, 53. Fire Alley gets 53 and so on. And there is the late entrant, Airways Law, the final supplementary entry of a rating of 108, getting 53 kilos. Now, let's just count down in the blue how many horses there are? One, Comedy Dink, two, Bulgarian, three, do it again, four, Linebacker, five, Almutrana, six, Asterix, seven, Puerto Manzana, eight, Russian Rock, nine, Bingua, ten, Safe Passage, 11, Marina, 12, Nebros, 13, Second Base, 14, Zilzal, 15, Krantau, 16, Flying Cop at 17, Hood Sprite, 80. And I'm just counting the top 80. But you basically got Sovereign Spirit 19, Sparkling Water 20, Aragosta 21, Pomp and Power 22, Red Saxon 23, Zapatias 24, Waterbury Lane 25, Divine Odyssey 26, Fire Alley 27, Airways Law 28, Crimson King 29, Warrior 30, Native Tongue 31, Super Silvano 32, One Way Traffic 33, Kalima 34, Never Ending Rain 35, Silvano's Time at 36. So you've got 36 horses. And you've got half of those set to be eliminated now from the race. Um, and that's the discussion that will take place in a week's time before the final field is announced. And um, that's where we're going to leave this particular program. And I just wanted to highlight those facts, too, because we're going to be discussing with our panel which are the horses um, that are most likely a, to stand their ground, and two, maybe to have your final anti-post bets on. I have to warn people with anti-post bets that if you take a bet before the final field is declared and that horse is scratched or eliminated from the race, you lose your money with bookmakers. Um, so you have to be very careful that uh, you're almost positive that your horse is going to get a run because the worst thing um, is to have a bet on a horse and the horse doesn't end up making the final field. Of course, there are circumstances beyond your control. We remember back to the um, start of uh, a couple of years ago where Hawam, uh, unfortunately, didn't go into the source and scratch at the start. Um, certain bookmakers refunded that. People that had backed that once the final field had been known got their money back. But if you backed it anti-post before the final field was known, you lost your money. So that's just a preamble and a precursor to our uh, big discussion later on on this uh, Wednesday evening with 17 days go to go to the Hollywood Bets Durban July. Hopefully it was interesting for you. And that's brought to you by Clock in the Gallery.